No, it's not a Gibson, but it's one of the nicest single cut guitars I've ever played. Yes, welcome back to the channel you guys. Hope you're having a fantastic day today. Super excited about this guitar. This is the Schechter Solo 2 Blackjack. Now at this point you might be saying, didn't you just say this was one of the nicest single cut guitars you've ever played and it's a Schechter? Well, let's talk about that. Now if you guys remember, I think it was last year I demoed the Solo 2 Custom. Absolutely loved that guitar. So did my brother, so I gave it to him. I still get to see it all the time. He really enjoys it. This is the brand new guitar in that series. This is the Solo 2 Blackjack. This guitar is so good and the price is so good and the features are so good and everything is so precise and high end on this guitar. I simply don't think a company like Gibson could make this. Certainly not at the price range, not with the feature set and the specs. We'll get into that in a second. They would have to charge, you know, so much for a guitar like this. And that is why I love Schechter. Now this is a high-end guitar, but you know, compared to anything else in the price range and if it was made by any other manufacturer, they'd have to charge you double. So that's one of the reasons why I say this is one of the nicest single cut guitars I've ever played because when you're an average player or even a professional player, every single dollar counts and what you get for that dollar really counts. And when it comes to that, these are hard to beat. Now as I'm going through these specs, keep a mental tally, ask yourself what a major manufacturer would charge for this feature set. Number one, locking tuners. Of course, on a higher end guitar, we expect locking tuners. The Schechter ones, very, very good. They are pretty heavy, but I've got to say there's zero headstock dive. So it's very ergonomic and it's very balanced, which means, you know, when you put it on a strap, it's not always doing this, which is, you know, super annoying. So very ergonomic, love that. Uh, Graftech nut, very important on a three plus three design that you have a very good nut. Graftech makes great stuff. Also, really nice volute here, which is also, you know, for me, very important, especially if you have a mahogany neck. It's just simply not as strong as maple. So we've got a three-piece mahogany neck, and check this out, satin on the back of the neck. The whole guitar is a beautiful high gloss, but on the back of the neck, satin. Love that. And I'm sure it takes more time and more money to do a feature like this, but perfect players feature you know just gives you that nice look of a painted body and painted neck but with a much smoother finish on the back love that also should mention carbon reinforcement rods something again you don't see on those high-end makers so this neck is going to stay put you know temperature change humidity change uh, you want to keep that minimal but when you have the carbon reinforcement rods it's going to be stable. Now on the front face we've got an ebony fingerboard, again usually an upcharge from most major manufacturers, and stainless steel frets. The day we see stainless steel frets on most Stratocasters or Les Pauls, I'll probably just run up and down the street in my house coat raving like a madman, <laughs> you know, like I don't think it's gonna come. And here, you know, on most Schecters between, you know, a thousand bucks and twelve hundred bucks, you see stainless steel frets on a lot of those models. Also, compound radius. So we're talking about satin on the back. We're talking about stainless steel frets, compound radius, you know, ebony fingerboard, carbon reinforcement rods. We haven't even got to the body and the price tag from anybody else is already like through the roof. Right. Now as for the body, well, the first thing I noticed was just how clean the lines were on this guitar. And part of that I think is there's no poker chip around the toggle here. This thing's nearly silent and feels amazing, and there's no pickup rings. So it just gives the guitar an incredibly clean look. Very cool. Now, on the back side here, it's a mahogany body, I should say. Uh, there's belly cut right here, and I think what they call their ultra access joint. So instead of more of a square block, uh, you sort of get a rounded heel joint there, which helps for upper fret access. Uh, what else? Lundgren pickups. Again, super high-end set of pickups here. Uh, locking saddle, locking bridge, Tone Pro. Um, coil splits right here on, the, on the, the tone control. So, I mean, there's almost nothing that this guitar doesn't have. 
So there you guys go. I'm sure I missed a few things, but those are the main highlights on this guitar. And of course, it features my favored Schecter inlays, the offset lines with three on the 12th fret. Now, of course, specs aren't everything. If the guitar doesn't play well, if it doesn't give you the sounds that you want, you know, it might not be a good fit. Well, happily, playability on this thing is insane. It's so good. It came set up from the factory uh, absolutely beautifully. So I didn't have to tweak anything. And in terms of the tones, well, let's find out. Now, we'll give you guys some heavy distortion. These Lundgren pickups have a reputation of clarity under high gain. So we'll test that out. We'll do some bluesy overdrives, some cleans, and of course, test out the coil splits. <laughs> So I think it's safe to say no matter what flavor of high gain you prefer, this guitar will handle it no problem. <laughs> Let's try taking the volume down just a touch there. You know, you never really know how a, a pickup's going to respond to changes in volume, especially, you know, higher output ones, but this sounds really good. So let's try uh, the neck pickup a bit here. So let's try that neck pickup. You know, we're just kind of in that classic rock kind of range. Let's dial the, the volume down again there. Yeah, overall, you know, pretty impressed with the range that you can get um, out of these Lundgrens. So I'm in the neck pickup there, really nice and warm. Let's uh, try splitting the coils here, see what that sounds like. I mean, that's not a tone you would normally associate with a guitar like this. Very usable. Let's try actually uh, both pickups in the split mode. So that's bridge and, uh, yeah, bridge and neck split. hear the quack I think when we go fully clean uh, that's gonna be a great tone for sure all right so let's uh, yeah go from overdrive to straight clean now when it comes to guitars with high output pickups I always feel like the clean tones suffer quite a bit so let's check out these Lundgrens see what they sound like totally clean so let's start in the neck pickup here I'll just play some G C A minor kind of things just some basic chords <laughs> Well, I've definitely heard worse. Let's split them.
Now as for the tones, well, I thought this thing was surprisingly versatile. It responded really well to backing off the volume when using high gain and getting all those in-between tones. Now, let's be honest, if you mostly play with gain, you're gonna be in heaven. This thing sounds amazing with you know heavy gain, medium gain, light breakup even. I thought it sounded really good in that neck pickup. So lots of versatility there. Now when it came to clean tones, I think I could probably dial in some better ones. I just used the settings that were on my amp, but there's some usable tones there for sure. And I've played some Les Pauls where I'm like, nope, not gonna happen. So I think uh, these pickups are surprisingly versatile. And with the coil splits, it just adds that versatility. If you're kind of struggling to find it with the main humbucker, just try splitting the coils. I thought the in-between setting with both coil split was very nice as well. Now, like I said, when I was playing, uh, the coil splits aren't gonna convince anybody that you're playing on a Strat, but it adds some nice versatility. So here are my final thoughts on the Schecter Solo 2 Blackjack. Now this guitar retails for in and about $1,200. And you start thinking about the specs with the locking tuners, the Graftech nut, you know, the ebony fingerboard, stainless steel frets, satin neck, carbon reinforcement rods, high-end pickups, high-end hardware, and on and on. And I would buy this over, you know, like a Gibson Les Paul Studio any day of the week. This just kicks on that hard, especially when you talk about the overall construction and the playability. So, you know, areas that have plagued Gibson on their mid-range, low-range, well, let's be honest, even some of their high-end guitars, you don't see any of that here. So you just pick it up and play it, and it's, you know, a great experience. Now, I think if you primarily play clean tones, you might want to avoid this, but even if you, you know, start to play bluesy tones, you guys heard, uh, very, very nice. Uh, and I think you could probably dial in some, some better clean tones if you spent some time. But these pickups are pretty hot, so you know, I'd probably lower them a bit if you wanted to play more with cleans. But it is set up you know, to be a high gain dream, for sure it is. And it sounds amazing there. So there you guys go. Ergonomics are great. No headstock dive at all. You know, as I said, the fretwork is supreme. Those, those stainless steel frets are just smooth for sliding and bending. Uh, if you've never played on them, they're, they're a great experience for sure. And yeah, other than that, if you guys uh, want more information, I'll link to it in the video description below. Other than that, have yourself a great day.